Expats are fleeing Ecuador. <laughs> no, they're not. But some expats do leave, and we are going to tell you why in this video. All right, this is our members' choice video from September. So if you want to cast your vote for the October video, check below for a link to that. We're going to record it in the next couple of days, and you'll get to watch it as soon as we post it and not have to wait a whole month. We're doing a countdown, and reason number 10 is culture shock. Yeah, some people just don't adjust to it. It can be a bit rough. There are a lot of things that they do differently here. There's a lot of bureaucracy that is different. Things take longer. They take more times to accomplish. I'm always reminded about the rule of three. It seems like it always takes us three times to get something done when it's the first time we're doing it. Once you have the groundwork laid, then you're fine. But you need to always have a little bit of extra patience because they only tell you step number one. They don't tell you step number two, three, four, five, and six. So they don't always anticipate the future needs and the fact that you may want to know all of the steps in your planning. One of the things that bothers me in terms of not anticipating is when we're walking down the sidewalk or in the mall, they like to walk next to each other. So like in the U.S., if there's four of us, we'll walk two and two. And here they walk four across or three across or however many is in their group. They take up as much room as they can. And we were in the mall the other day walking along and there were three people approaching us. And then we were walking past three people next to us. And I was just curious, like, what are they going to do when they get to each other in, in this narrow walkway in the mall? And sure enough, they all just ran right into each other. I couldn't believe it. But that's kind of how it is here. They just don't think ahead like, oh, I should maybe get over so these people can go by. They basically walk right into each other. And then they're like, oh, where did you come from? <laughs> they don't, don't think like uh, Americans do in that respect. Like we get over ahead of time. We see people coming. We get like behind each other, in front of each other and make room for people. They just don't do that. We, they're running into us all the time. Some people are on their phones. They're not paying any attention. They'll run into us. That's one of the cultural things that still bothers me after five years of living here. You do get used to it and we've adapted and I can't really think of much that bothers me anymore. The rule of threes, I just accept now. And the, you just have to know to ask a lot of questions. We tell you guys this all the time. Ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, because you cannot assume that people are going to just give you all the information that you need up front. All right, next up is people get homesick. This is number nine, and it's a really common reason why expats leave Ecuador. Yeah, we hear this a lot. A lot of you are hesitant to move here even because you're afraid you're going to be too far away from your grandkids or from your family members or your friends. Yeah, especially if you have aging parents in their 80s or 90s and they need care and you don't have anybody back home to, to help with that. A lot of expats leave to go back to take care of their aging parents or their grandchildren. They mm -hmm. Some people have grandchildren, new grandchildren. They don't want to miss out on those years, so they go back to be with them. Yeah, this is a tough one. We always tell people you can do a lot of video calls, but as JP said, there are going to be times when you are probably going to need to go back home, and that is one of the reasons why expats leave. Yep. All right. Number eight is the language barrier. And it can get really frustrating. We actually know several people who just got tired of trying to learn Spanish and struggling with it because as we get old and our brains get hard, it's not as easy to learn a foreign language as it is when we're kids. And it gets really frustrating trying to communicate. It can be very frustrating. I know I'm very jealous of little kids who are fluent. I wish that would have been us, yeah. but it's not. Don't give up to me is so worth it. But we have a lot of friends that have decided they'd rather go to an English speaking country. Yeah, after five years, we're still not fluent. I would call our Spanish functional. We get by, we can communicate with people, especially the important things like the Mercado, taxi drivers, and what else do I say? Restaurants, we're really good at restaurant Spanish. <laughs> But, you know, we can't have philosophical conversations. I still prefer my doctor to speak English because I don't want there to be any miscommunication about health care issues. And luckily, most all the doctors that we've had sp speak fluent English, so it hasn't been an issue. But it can be frustrating when you're trying to do things at the bank or at a mm -hmm. government building and you go in and you're trying to communicate in, in, in a foreign language that you're not fluent in. And they just speak so fast. Spanish is one of the fastest languages on the planet. And sometimes it's just really hard to, to know what they're talking about. It's also very frustrating because people are still wearing masks here. And it's harder for me to understand when I can't see people's mouths. So you can't tell what they're saying. 
And also, it's muffled. Yeah, and they, they're just quiet speakers to begin with, the Ecuadorians especially. We yes. haven't noticed that in other Latin American countries as much, especially Mexico, where they speak much louder. But here in Ecuador, they're very calm, soft-spoken people, and it's really hard to understand when they've got a mask on and you're speaking a foreign language that you don't fully understand. We've heard this from a lot of people. They come here with good intentions, and then they find that they can get into a group of people where it's easier to speak English. So... Mm -hmm. I'm t saying this to us as well as to you. We encourage you to keep powering through with your Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Even like our Ecuadorian friends, almost all of them speak fluent English. It's so Jealous. easy, I know. And then, <laughs> you know, we try to speak Spanish and stuff, but it just, it just almost always reverts back to English, probably because they get tired of hearing us butcher their beautiful language. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we right. digressed. Number seven is they catch the adventure bug. Once you move abroad and you see what the world has to offer, a lot of people realize that they don't want to just stay in one place for the rest of their lives. That is true. Not everyone comes to Ecuador to stay in Ecuador. Some people come here as digital nomads, so they are here for three months or six months. Some people only want to do that two-year visa, and then they move on. It's so exciting. Once, once the curtain is lifted and yes. you realize that the world isn't as scary or dangerous as we've always been led to believe in our home countries that you're like, wow, I really think I could go spend some time in Colombia or Peru or who knows where else. We have we have friends that have been all over the world. Yeah, They lived in Ecuador for almost two years and then they went off and they're all over the place. Now they're heading to Thailand. So all that guys, you know who we're talking about. I know you guys, I still want you to start your own YouTube channel. <laughs> I know I told him that I wanted to, I should have strapped a camera to his head before they left Ecuador. And now I'm really wishing I would have. <laughs> no. All right, number six is not a fun one it's crime and crime mm -hmm. has gone up since the pandemic here and it's really becoming concerning for a lot of expats yeah things have definitely gotten a little dicey in parts of the country we still feel safe and we've been traveling around ecuador we have not had any issues but there definitely has been an increase of crime like jp said the pandemic really ha took its toll on the country because tourism just completely stopped people lost their jobs nobody was working because we were locked down for so long and they just have not recovered and then we had that last paro which did not help matters yeah a lot of people slipped back into poverty the middle class was yeah. growing rapidly in ecuador before the pandemic but that completely reversed after basically six months of no working and no tourism. So it's really hurt people. That has led to an increase in robberies. It's also kind of created a vacuum that the drug people were happy to fill. And so yeah. they're here now. And this, we were talking to some of our good Ecuadorian friends just yesterday, and they said that this is just really unusual for Ecuador. And they don't know how to deal with it because mm -hmm. they've never had this problem before with the violence and the crime. And they're kind of at a loss of what to do. And I think they don't have the training or the funding to really deal with it as effectively as they could. So along with this is number five, which is political instability. So with the increase in crime, it has also created a lot of complaints about how the government is handling it. And a lot of people have kind of stepped up to the plate to say they can do it better. The PARO led to an impeachment process, which didn't succeed. So our, the president, Lasso, is still the president of Ecuador. But there was a whole movement to impeach him and, and have a new election. And it's this power vacuum that has been created because of the pandemic and the resulting crime and instability is, you know, political instability is a problem. We talked about it in well, almost three years ago in one of our videos, why we chose Ecuador was because it was polit politically stable among the Latin American countries. Well, we can't say that as much now as we could then. No, but this is a worldwide issue. It's fascinating to observe because it's happening all over the place. I'm really not worried about it, but some of you are, and we've heard from people who have decided they came on a tourist visa thinking they were gonna stay longer and they just decided they didn't wanna take the chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully we get back to the way it was before the yes. pandemic. And I think uh, economic improvements would help that tremendously. And we know the government is working on that and that's yeah. some of the demands of the protesters are to improve the economics of the country. So hopefully some of these measures that they're doing will help with that. All right, number four are visa issues. People come here on a 90 day tourist visa expecting to get their visa and some of them, the, the laws change right in the middle of the process and they didn't qualify anymore. Yeah, 
we don't hear about this too much. We had a wave of this happen in October, and it happened a couple years before. It happened in March. Was that March? Yes. Amelia's lost track of time. That was in March when they inst- March 10th when they instituted okay. the new visa laws and they tripled the income requirement for the pensioner visa and a lot of people just didn't qualify anymore. Yeah, that was that impacted a lot of people. We had a lot of upset people and understandably so. The good news is is that well, I guess this is dependent upon your perspective. They often change the laws here. So if you're not in a category that you would like to be right now, it's possible that in another year, something will have changed and you will qualify. Yep, just have to keep an eye on it. Yes. All right, number three is healthcare. Even though we talk about how great healthcare is in Ecuador, some people come from countries that have universal healthcare that pays all of their medical bills and they don't have to have insurance like Canada and every other country besides the United States. So if they have a serious medical issue or they're just getting older, maybe even in the US, maybe you hit 65 and you qualify for Medicare, mm-hmm. it's a good reason to go back. You know, you right. can afford healthcare better. Yeah, some people have gone back to get cancer treatments and things like that mm-hmm. that is covered through Medicare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the US does have really good cancer treatment programs. Yes, I was reading an article about that this morning. And that's one of the things where the US excels. Also, ex- any kind of experimental treatments are really great in the US. As far as your standard daily care, we feel like it's far better in Ecuador, like yes. general care and and even some of the specialists we feel like are really good here. And it's so much more affordable. We talked about that in a previous video. So I'm not gonna rehash it here, but we're a big fan of Ecuadorian healthcare. All right, number two is boredom. <laughs> I know, which is hard to believe, but we have had people tell us that they just do not have enough to do. I think the language barrier comes into play with this too because they come here, they've retired early, and then they wanted to do things and get involved, but if they're not fluent in Spanish, it makes it much more difficult. We've had some friends that have gone back to the United States to go back to work. Yeah, I can't imagine that. <laughs> but some people <laughs> retire early in their 50s. They come here, they live for a few years, and they're like, I'm just bored, and I, I miss having the like the water cooler interactions and having something to do and some way to meaningfully mm-hmm. contribute. And so they go back to work. To me, I would, I'm, I love what we do, but we work a lot, but it's, I guess it's not a job. I just have well, no interest in going back no, to a I job. Don't. Maybe they like that stability. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't feel like we have a job either. We work a lot, but we don't work a set schedule and all the time. We have so much flexibility and we travel all over the place, but not everybody's in a position to do that. Yeah, I love our lifestyle. We have the freedom lifestyle that, God, I just, I'm so thankful for it. All right, number one, the number one reason expats leave Ecuador is it's too far from home. I don't know if I would call this the number one reason, JP, but it fits into what I think is the number one reason, and that is because people miss their family. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that with Ecuador, even though it's only a four and a half hour flight to Miami, you still have to fly to Miami and then probably take another flight elsewhere. So it can take a long time, and the flights are not always the easiest or the most convenient. The good news is LATAM is adding daily flights from Quito to Miami, so that might make things a little bit easier for those of you who need to go home more often. Yeah, it's also really expensive. When we went back to the U.S., it was, what, $2,500, one way for us to go from Quito to Texas, and wasn't that right? That was correct. Oh, man, it's just so expensive, and it took forever. We left in the middle of the night. Our flight left at 1 a.m., and so we it was a long day of travel and super expensive. Had we lived in Mexico, it would have been a short flight and super cheap, which is one reason why a lot of people prefer Mexico over any of the South American countries. It's just easier to get back home, especially if you have aging families or grandchildren. Yeah, this is one of the reasons people don't like to look much further than Ecuador, because I know Uruguay is on, people are very curious about it, but it is a whole full day just to get there from Ecuador. Yeah, yeah, it's a four or five hour flight from Quito to Montevideo. So it's a long ways. It's like a nine hour flight yeah. direct from Miami to Montevideo in Uruguay and or in Argentina. Buenos Aires is basically right next door to there. It is a long ways from the United States and really not easy to get back home. No, the bottom line is Ecuador still is on another continent. And if that worries you and your family, then Ecuador may not be the right place for you. And this is 
why some expats decide to go to a different country or just go back home. Yeah. We have no plans to leave. I know people ask us that all the time. We still plan on applying for our Ecuadorian citizenship next year when we are eligible, but we know that not everyone feels the same way and some people come and then leave. The vast majority of expats that we know and have met are still here. It's a minority that actually leave. So unconventionals, if we haven't scared you off yet and you are still planning your move to Ecuador, then check out our e-course. Yeah, we created an A to Z expat fast track that will walk you through every step of the process. And we're running a special on it through the weekend for 20% off. Check below for a link and the discount code. If you found this video helpful, then we think you'll like this one too. And if you have any other concerns about moving to Ecuador or living in Ecuador, drop those in the comments below. We'll do our best to respond to them. Please leave us a like. And we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.